Hey guys, what's up? Shao Style, I'm Joe the Editor, however you fucking know me as, and whatever other random bullshit that other YouTubers yell at in the beginning of their videos. Alright, I'm actually kind of excited because, like, I just got myself a new webcam, and, like, eh, I'm actually super happy about that. <laughs> at first, I actually used a camera on my phone, you know, I just set it up and, like, I started recording myself, but that was just too much of a pain in the ass, you know, I had to sync the audio and all this shit, and, yeah, fuck all that. When I come across something that I want to share, I can just hit record on OBS. I already have the camera set up. I have the mic set up. We record it, and, you know, edit it later, and there you go. Boom, instant video, right? So so that being said, me talking about like uh, hardware and technology and all that stuff and whatnot. Um, one question I get asked is basically, what's a, what hardware to get? And, you know, uh, Some people ask directly about what kind of computer I have and stuff like that. Or, um, I actually had friends that like uh, they copy exactly what I have you know, like, in regards to computers. Uh, computer parts and all that stuff, right? So just like with anything, um, say if you're a painter, obviously you're gonna have, there's a specific type of paint that you like, a specific type of brushes that you like to use. If you like to drive cars, there's a specific type of model of car you like to drive for whatever reason. You know, shit like that. There's, there's a cool thing about personal computers. Obviously, you can set them up at the way you want them, right? And with me... I like to do more than just editing, right? I like to do a lot of uh, 3D and After Effects and you know a lot of like visual compos compositing type of stuff, right? So my computer is pretty much catered to what I need, right? So recently I started to mess around with Blender more and Blender is able to like use GPU rendering. So what that means is if you have multiple GPU cards, you're able to render something out of Blender faster because it's able to use the GPUs, right? So instead of using one GPU, it's using, um, in my case, I'm using two GPUs, right? I got two 1070s uh, in my computer right now. It gets hot as fuck in my room, but like the cool thing about that is like, because there's more quarter cores in the GPU, it's able to render faster than using my uh, the CPUs, right? Basically, what I want to talk about is like in regards to having like um, a good base entry level PC to edit, let's just throw out the whole gaming shit out of the way, right? Let's just not talk about gaming whatsoever. Specifically, just talking about like uh, editing. Uh, what would be a good computer for you to edit comfortably without having any hiccups or problems or any, you know, having a computer crash or just lie in any manner? Um, I discovered that uh, for what I do, what I would encourage is basically this computer or the specs of this computer should be like the bare minimums for you to have a good uh, entry level PC, right? If you're interested in a laptop, cool. Maybe you can get this, you know, uh, or anything that has a similar, um, you know, specifications as this, right? If you're able to like stay within the budget, 1060 should be sufficient. If you want to uh, save a little bit more money, you can probably get the 1050. But I wouldn't encourage you to get the 1050 Ti cards, right? But 1060, uh, I would encourage you to stick with that. Uh, the six gigabytes of uh, VRAM. You know, you definitely want to have enough re VRAM if you want to, like, you know, start doing more like just compositing and stuff like that. You know, like that way, especially if you're gonna do like CUDA acceleration type of editing. You know, because like uh, the more VRAM you have, certain things, say like After Effects, uh, it does use up some of the VRAM, especially if you're gonna you do like 3D compositing and stuff like that. Yeah, because if you max out your VRAM, pretty much what ends up happening is your computer crashes and it freezes up, you know, so you want to have enough of, uh, you know, VRAM, you know, space for your computer, you know, uh, when you're editing and all that stuff. For someone like me, I would like to work with 32 gigabytes of RAM, right? Mainly because, like I said, I work with After Effects, so After Effects uses a lot of RAM, you know, a lot of memory. Pretty much temporarily stores a lot of, like, uh, the image data inside the RAM, so you can have a faster playback, so it does eat up the RAM very quickly. As you can see here, at the moment, it's using 10 uh, gigabytes of uh, RAM. Let's do an experiment. I'm going to open up a bunch of software because usually when I'm editing, this how I edit. I usually have a bunch of software open and stuff like that. So I want to see what happens if I open up a bunch of software, if it uses up more memory. So I'm going to open up, uh, let's see, I'm going to open up After Effects. I'm going to open up Photoshop, uh, Media Encoder. I'm also going to open up uh, Adobe Bridge. I use that along with Premiere Pro. Now you can see here, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, and so as you see here, usually when I'm editing, I have a lot of software open, right? Because it doesn't make like sense to like to close a software if I'm going to use it again, right? You know, see, it went from like uh, 10 gigabytes of uh, RAM being used and then went up to like, uh, it's getting close to 14 gigabytes of RAM used, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like uh, I would encourage, or for someone like me, I will be more comfortable with uh, using a 32 gigabyte RAM kit. Uh, mainly that way you can have enough space for your computer to work comfortably with enough uh, memory. Right, but 16 gigabytes should be okay, right? But you know, obviously, you want your computer to work as smoothly as possible. So, if you're able to get 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, I would encourage that. But 16 gigabytes, you should be, you know, very good with that. Uh, the other thing about this laptop it is that it had a four-core CPU, right? It had the um, seventh-generation Intel quad-core. 
the i7-7700 HQ. And um, actually, it worked fine, really. I didn't have any that much problems with it. Uh, I mean, there was some lag, uh, then obviously, but um, as I mentioned in my past videos, I, I use proxies, you know, to um, increase my workflow. And yeah, that's something I definitely encourage you guys to work with is creating Cineform proxies. The proxies are definitely a time saver. It increases your workflow. You don't you have like no lag whatsoever. So in this case, since we have only a a four core, eight thread CPU. While I was encoding in the background, I was still able to edit, you know, using Premiere Pro and like, I mean, yeah, I did stutter and lag a bit, but like I was still able to get something started. And in the meantime, in the background, like Media Encoder was transcoding the footage into a proxy, into Cineform, right? So it didn't, really, it didn't crash or anything like that. I didn't get any blue screens or anything like that. So it was, it was pretty cool. It worked out. So as a minimum in core count, uh, four cores should be fine. Like I said, with this one, that was fine. You definitely want to get a CPU that's able to have hyper-threading, right? So from the four cores, you get, you know, eight cores virtually or whatever you call that shit. A four-core CPU, it should be good. Now, storage. Um, I definitely w would encourage you to use an SSD for your for your software. Now, again, if you want to get this laptop, that's cool. I personally do not like to edit on laptops. You know, it's very cramped. It's small, and uh, it's just more comfortable working on a desktop, obviously, right? So if you're going to go the desktop route, obviously, you have to invest in monitors and mouses and keyboards and all this shit. Uh, with this, you know, laptop, you know, it's mainly convenience, right? But, yeah, editing on a laptop is just too much of a pain in the ass for me, especially on this thing. It's a 14-inch, like, uh, screen. It was way too much, you know? I had to squint a lot. I had to have my face right up against the screen just to see what was going on. You know, it was a lot. So the reason why I'm just showing you this is because the specifications of this laptop, if you want to transfer over it to create yourself a, a small, like, computer, you know, you can get what you need and, like, maybe get yourself, like, a, a mini ITX a motherboard. ASRock is usually more on the affordable side. From my understanding, they're not super advanced. I, I guess... It, Definitely make you do your own research, but from my from what I see, ASRock is you know pretty good. And the cool thing with like uh, some uh, motherboards is like they come in with built-in Wi-Fi, so you definitely want to get something with that. You have a slot for the GPU. That's basically all you need to start with. You have like two slots for like the RAM. You know, again, that's probably good for you to start with. And like uh, this is the LGA 1151 socket for like the new uh, CPUs that I'm like uh, referring to. Yeah, definitely if you're going to invest in a new computer or if you want to upgrade to a new computer or whatever, definitely go with what's current. You know, I would suggest that because usually software and our hardware, they kind of work hand in hand. As the hardware advances, so does the software, you know, certain things do uh, get updated for like a new hardware that's, that's available. And yeah, you know, in regards to storage, you know, I definitely would encourage you guys to like uh, get one SSD, you know, for all your software. Have one, me one mechanical hard drive for all your files to be stored up and stuff like that. And maybe a separate uh, mechanical hard drive that has a faster read and write speed, like uh, Worcester Digital Black, you know, mechanical, mechanical hard drive. That way all your proxies and cache files can be stored into that, right? And then obviously, you know, just like every now and then, you know, delete the shit you don't need. Oh, and uh, this is just me, but I discovered that it helps massively. So something that I invested in is basically since I go with uh, to Paul's house to help him film, and then once we're done filming, he basically gives me all the footage to transfer, you know, from his house to my house. Um, I got myself a portable SSD. I got the T1500 uh, from Samsung. This is the black version. I got a I got a blue one, but it's basically the same shit. Uh, I think this thing cost me about two hundred dollars, I believe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was definitely well worth it. Um. The cool thing about this little uh, portable SSD is that it uses like the C connection, right? So it's a fast transfer. It's a fast read and write speed. So basically, yeah, literally with this thing, I just connected to my uh, C connection on my motherboard. I'm able to edit off this thing, actually, you know? Like, I don't have to transfer it into my computer or anything. Uh, but I could just drop it into Premiere Pro. It creates the proxies. You know, then I edit off the proxies through my mechanical device, my mechanical hard drive. And like, yeah, it's actually, these things are really cool. So, uh... You don't have to get this, but, you know, if you're going to be working uh, with a lot of people that will uh, hand you over footage, maybe get yourself something like this will definitely help. I got the 500. Uh, that turns out to be more than enough. Once I'm done with the project, I just take all the footage from this device and I put it into a large uh, mechanical hard drive for, you know, backup storage just in case. But, yeah, this thing is awesome. All right, so I'm going to add the video here. So I want to give a quick thanks. I noticed that, like, uh, there has been a consistent number of, like, views on my uh, tutorials on, like, how I edit. So I do appreciate that. You know, I'm going to keep that going, right? 
it does mean a lot to me that like uh, I have a certain amount of people that are interested in watching my videos, right? And you know, I'm super cool with that because uh, my channel is like a small classroom. At least I want to see it that way. So if you have a specific question, then there is a good high chance that I'm able to respond to you directly. You know, if you have a question or if there's something that you need help with, right? Honestly, wouldn't know what to do <laughs> if I had like a fucking shit lot of people asking me the same question over and over. One of the few videos that actually got I guess a good amount of views. How to fix the out of sync audio from camera footage. A lot of people were asking me the same question over and over and it actually drove me nuts. I got to the point where it's like, I had to put in the descriptions and I had to do a pin comment, be like, I'm no longer answering any more questions because it was just way too much. So yeah, <laughs> I'm totally okay with having like the small group of people following me and checking out my videos, right? If the channel grows to whatever number it, do, it will or does, just if it ever does, then I'm okay with that. But for the time being, uh, super thank you for watching the videos and all that stuff. It does mean a lot to me. So anyways, I'm going to end the video here. More tutorials coming and random shit like this. So thanks again. Take care and peace.